In the past 24 hours, we saw some really negative price momentum on Bitcoin. This had many commentators on X and around the world thinking that a black swan event was unfolding. I've deeply researched this and I'm going to put some things together for you to help you to understand where Bitcoin is, where it could be going and what is coming next. And more particularly, the secret reason that caused this particular problem inside markets that I found nobody actually talked about. Let's run the numbers. I'd like to take you across what's been happening recently in terms of Bitcoin across X. We'll first start with history. Not surprisingly, the news was fairly negative. In 2014, Yahoo Finance commented on Bitcoin's fall to $479. What was a nightmare in 2014 would have been the most incredible investment you could have ever made in 2024. This also means that we need to zoom out of price action and also invest and trade. One year ago, those pesky Bitcoin bulls projected study Bitcoin onto the ECB headquarters exactly one year ago. Awareness is growing. Also, this day in 2017, Japan passed the Payment Services Act, which officially recognized Bitcoin as property and a legal payment method. Always remember that ownership laws fuel adoption. This was also floating around on Twitter slash X, the price of a home US dollars versus Bitcoin. In 2016, a US home cost 664 Bitcoin. In 2020, it cost 45 Bitcoin. In 2024, it costs 6.6 .6 Bitcoin. You could say that Bitcoin has no top because fiat printing has no end. Analysis out from Glassnode suggests that we are actually just right here in terms of Bitcoin's price momentum. Glassnode is saying that we're tracking the 2020 Bitcoin cycle and we've got a long way to go. But this is really interesting. 2024 market index is equivalent to December 2020 from duration and distance from previous all time high. But what exactly does this mean? Glassnode believes we're around 0.1. Where is 0.1? It's around $7,500. And when we consider, we just basically topped out over that 68000 mark. There is a potential 827% increase on the horizon, according to Glassnode. But that doesn't mean it's just going to go straight up in a line. It doesn't work like that. As we saw when we had that COVID or C-19 and the US liquidity crisis, prices came down crazily. But if you bought during this time, that would have made you absolutely and utterly, just like in 2014. A question for the comments. If you see that Bitcoin's price is doing something like this, just going down and down and down, and of course that would mean that the alts are going to bleed exponentially worse, would you be stepping in to buy more or would you have any spare cash to do so? In other words, do you have your three-dimensional strategy? Please let me know, are you prepared for negative price action, consolidation action and up action simultaneously? In the next section of this analysis, we'll talk about charts. This is analysis directly from Twitter. Kevin said, wow, look at Bitcoin. It's having a black swan event. Alert, alert. What were other people talking about? A lot of people were saying, hey, do nothing if it falls within this range. Sell it if it comes up here and buy it if it comes down here. Always remember, only you can buy or sell. Please be cautious how you do either. And always have your three-dimensional strategy, your CTK strategy, which is a neutral strategy if things go this way, a down strategy if price comes down, and an up strategy. And you need to have these three decided right now. I've literally spent hours and hours going through X and going through what's happening there to digest it all for you in a very short amount of time. 
we're seeing a lot of these cup and handle patterns emerge inside X slash Twitter. Basically, a cup and handle pattern says that people just get into a previous all time high, sell down and then start to base with the expectation of going forward. Please be aware that these patterns are typically bullish, but patterns are not guarantees. It's very important to assess retail sentiment and you might notice that what's being displayed here is that the potential for Bitcoin to come down and touch this specific trend line is on the cards according to OnChain College. Always remember that how people do these kind of analyses is really different. You can see here it didn't even touch the line, here it didn't touch the line, but it's appearing as though it's like this. So just be aware, and there's no little thing in there either. So when you come to analyze things, you just got to be aware of what's actually occurring. Retail will be looking for a touch on the moving averages, a lower moving average, but which one? In another post, you can see retail sentiment with this particular indicator has got a little bit of a mixed pattern here. It's saying all sorts of things. It's either saying it's hit its top and it's going to come down or it's just about to start to get going like this. It is very unclear what this analysis says and you can interpret it either way. The fact that we're before the halving and the fact that Glassnode said we're around this area, it could point to some negative price momentum, perhaps. We're going to need some more data on this one, and it's coming. People put money into financial markets because they want to make a profit. And when we look at Bitcoin total supply and profit, you can see back to the previous bull run. And just remember that Glassnode thinks that we're all the way back there in December 2020. So all the way back there. We haven't even started the parabolic run. But look at this. The Bitcoin total supply in profit right now has exceeded that previous level of Bitcoin supply and profit at the previous two peaks of the last cycle. So that's something pretty interesting to be aware of. Now, what does this specifically mean? The first thing it means, people will be wanting to take profit and new entrants will be getting in around the top. That will also mean any big shakeups inside the market will generally push the profitability or the total supply in profit down rather sharply. Plan B also posted his Bitcoin chart and we're noticing, oh, this deep, dark blue dot is starting to appear. Now, what does that mean? Well, it depends on the cycle, but it's generally a very good sign of upward appreciation in the stock to flow model. You can see the red is getting closer. We're not there yet, but it's certainly getting closer. In another analysis Glassnode did, they put out this, which is really quite interesting. Instead of focusing around here, they now think we might be up there because of the large scale cost basis concentration on the new all time high break. So this is quite interesting. What are other people saying chart wise? They're saying, oh, look at this. The last time we went parabolic, which tends to suggest the second glass node analysis could be more correct if we just go on the basis of these data points. We may be starting to take off. So just just bear in mind, exponential takeoff may be getting very close. If we look at the Bitcoin accumulation trend score from Glassnode, what do we see here? It's getting really on the trend score. It's getting up to that 100%. Now, what's happened at the 100% mark? Well, we had some very good price action, but it's been at the 100% for quite a while now. So what does that mean in terms of where price can go? This specific chart is really unclear as to what it means. It's basically saying that we could retrace, we could consolidate, or we could take off. I'm going to clear things up very, very substantially towards the end of the video. But for now, you just need the foundations. You need to see what's going on. Now, exchange balances have also got into X in the last 24 hours. People have been commenting that exchange balances are coming down whilst the price is going up. The concept is that there's no Bitcoin to buy. We're in a supply shock already and the price can only go in one direction. 
that is up. It can only go up. But the problem is, if it's only going up, hang on a second, why is it going down and then going up and then going down? Please be aware, the price is always moving in a wave-based function. You can have a long-term trend line, but just be aware that it's going to vary around that. And when it comes to Bitcoin, Bitcoin can retrace 20, 30, even 40% at a time. That's really interesting because those kind of analyses have not made their way into X so far. In the last 30 days, we've seen 62,463 Bitcoin withdrawn from exchanges. This may give the indication that all exchanges are just running out of Bitcoin. But when we look at the 30 day, we're seeing Bitfinex and Coinbase Pro, especially Coinbase Pro, is the source of these withdrawals. When we look at something like Binance and especially Gemini, there's a lot of Bitcoin on those exchanges. Be aware of averages. If you looked at X slash Twitter, you would see a lot of news on Tether. Let's get into it. When we look at Bitcoin holdings across the ETFs, the miners, the listed companies and the outlier Tether, we can see Tether right here. It holds currently in excess of 75,000 Bitcoin. That's nearly double what the publicly traded miners hold. Impressive, most impressive. What's specifically impressive is that the Tether Treasury holds 75,354 Bitcoin. And as of yesterday, they just bought 8,888.8888, so many eights in there, Bitcoin. And they did that exactly at the end or the start of the last quarter also. They did that same thing, 8,888.888 reoccurring Bitcoin. You can see profitability wise, Tether is doing quite nicely. With the Bitcoin halving coming up, of course, we got to talk about the miners and they were on Twitter slash X. The Bitcoin halving is approximately 18 days away. Now, what happens when the Bitcoin halving occurs? There is a supply shock and the cost to the miners also double. Not surprisingly, the miners need to keep their cost down. So Bitcoin News posted out this. Bitcoin miners are flocking to Ethiopia to buying cheap hydro power currently priced at 0.03 per kilowatt hour. Not bad. Of course, there was also talk about the ETFs. U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs bought up over 66,000 Bitcoin in March, whilst miners only produced wow, 28,513. This is the supply shock that people are talking about, and it's only going to get worse slash better in the coming halving. And what your guru said, just in, BlackRock and Fidelity now hold 396,715 Bitcoin, worth over 27.27 billion. When we look at total Bitcoin spot ETF net inflows, when we look at the flows, what are we seeing? The flows have been decreasing. They picked up a little bit and they're decreasing again. You can see there was so much green activity, inflow activity, and very little outflow activity. That's got the outflows have gotten more and the inflows are being suppressed currently. You might notice also this association between outflows and price. So just something to bear in mind. One interesting thing to keep in mind across the weekend and public holidays, the stock market doesn't necessarily operate. So these spot Bitcoin ETFs can't actually buy anything. And we saw a degree of decreasing accumulation leading into the weekend. We've seen some really good inflows into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. Look at that, $13.6 billion just year to date. And this is despite the fact that the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has been hemorrhaging all the way through. We could be seeing a really interesting bull run. And when we consider Bitwise Invest said that if we get 1% allocation 
to crypto or slash Bitcoin. That could mean $1 trillion, $1,000 billion of inflows into Bitcoin ETFs. And if it's 2 to 3%, wow, market cap could easily go exponential. So you're seeing some really interesting things. Some analysis from Glassnode suggests we're just in the December phase here. Some other analysis from Glassnode again suggests we're in this phase. This analysis suggests we're in this phase. A lot of people say, Ken, I only want one direction. Is it going up or is it going down? Remember, price is always moving in a wave. The key is what direction is the basic trend line going? It's going up. No question about it. Just think back to 2014. In 2014, when Bitcoin just plummeted down, would you ever expected that it would go so high and it's going to keep on going? So just be aware, just keep in mind those housing prices. Now, welcome to the thing that they're not talking about at all. And this is probably because a lot of people are stuck only inside crypto if they're only into crypto. Hey, Ken, that makes sense. If I'm only into crypto, I only want to be stuck in crypto. That's a big mistake. What we saw over the past 24 hours, and this blue line is Bitcoin's price relative to the S&P 500 futures. You notice how Bitcoin weakened substantially and then just kept on going. What precipitated this? It was the fall off in the Nikkei 225. The Nikkei 225 took a nosedive. It literally fell through the floor. And the Nikkei has been doing really, really well. This sent shockwaves around the world and that eventually reflected into the major indices. The thing to note with the major indices, they generally get reflected last because there's so much money in them. We know that Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. If we're seeing weakness inside the main markets, that will flow through to weakness in the crypto market. But Ken, you've just been saying the narrative. Wow, Bitcoin's going to a trillion dollars, etc., etc. Well, yes, over time it will, because there's no upper limit to fiat printing. But in the short term, we can have violent swings, 20-30%. In Bitcoin and crypto, you need to be prepared. This is not the stock market, folks. This is something else. Another thing to bear in mind, Japan's stock market has been going utterly parabolic. And when it started to retrace, that's what sent shockwaves all over the place. So just be aware, we've got a lot of overextension. It would be quite reasonable to get some degree of retracement. In fact, it would be healthy. Getting a retracement, yeah, that's pretty ugly, but it allows things to go up further. The question is, are you prepared or do you only have it's going to the moon strategy? If you only have that strategy, you will be fully invested and you will not be able to buy the dips. Another thing that I'm not seeing anybody talk about just currently is US liquidity. And we can see that US liquidity recently took a nosedive. These nosedives are frequently precipitated or frequently come before negative price momentum inside the markets and weakening structure. So just be aware of this. This can happen and this can create a lot of volatility. But please understand also that this kind of volatility is something we should be taking advantage of. Do not get scared of the red. Do not run out of the markets like most people do. Run into the markets as the professionals do. As a global family, we look really far and wide because we know that Bitcoin and crypto is especially volatile. That means that we need to know how are the Forex pairs adding up against it. And you can see the overall correlation is for a retracement. Literally, Forex is indicating underlying market weakness at the current time. And this is not something to be scared of. This is something to take advantage of. When you get underlying weakness, it creates so many incredible wealth opportunities. If you're applying the CTKS method, you're already tracking the fact that yields have been going up. You've seen dollar strength. And when we get dollar strength, Forex strength like this, it frequently means that the markets are going to get hit. And we've seen the Aussie dollar and the Euro dollar falling to pretty harsh levels. Also, the probability of a 
ease in interest rates fell from 9.3% one day ago to 3.5%. This is why the yields and the dollar are reacting. Just honing in to the last 24 hours, we can see that Bitcoin took that dive down. Now, if you consider the futures, the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the Russell, you can see a very similar kind of pattern emerging between the major indices and Bitcoin. This is to be anticipated. The institutions are here. Also, something to take note of, when Bitcoin comes down, it's down around 1.19%. The alts will bleed relative to Bitcoin. Ethereum is down about 3.6%. Solana is doing much better, down about 2%. BNB, nearly 4% down, as is Doge. As is ADA, you can see some very similar. AVAX is a little bit stronger, only 3% down. And SHIB, nearly 6% down. Inside the masterclass and on the daily channel, we talk about a lot of rules because you'll need rules to be able to navigate these murky waters of financial markets. A lot of people just anticipate it's either going up or it's going down. Not the case. It's always moving in a wave, no matter what way it's going. It may be going down like this, or it may be coming back up. So you've got to be very mindful of what is triggering an either up or down action. In other words, you have to get educated. To take advantage of the wave-based functions that happen inside financial markets, we typically never go all in and we're looking for very specific signals from the market. We are professionals, we're not retail. Masterclass students, I suggest you use the EC method to see what's going on inside the crypto market. There's some very interesting things afoot and you really need to be aware of it. Please let me know in the comments, do you see market strength or market weakness? Using the EC method can create so much power and so much profit when you understand what different things are doing. So Masterclass students, please make sure you're keeping your eye on the different chart levels. It'll give you a really good insight. And the greatest gainers over the past 24 hours, Core has come out of nowhere. Wow, it's going for it. BitTensor, BGB, I like the Bee Gees. Pendle, Stacks, Sui, Leo, CRO, Jupiter, and Tether. The greatest losers in the past 24 hours Conflux, Pepe, Audi, Whiff, Gala, Ondo, Flare, 1000 Sats, Cake, and Worldcoin, which is just wild. Please let me know in the comments did you learn anything new in this video? And if you like this kind of analysis, please let me know. Remember, over time, we're going to see a lot more institutional adoption. So the case of Bitcoin and crypto going up is undoubtedly the major case that you should have inside your mind and your strategies. But don't forget, on that up case, you can see 20, 30 percent, even 40 percent reductions in price. And I'm talking about Bitcoin. This is why you must have your three-dimensional strategy or your CTK strategy at all times. Three directions, three dimensions to your thinking, not only up, but also consolidation, which aka very boring, and down, very terrifying. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video. And always remember this chart, it's a doozy. Bye for now.